Welcome to the Pet Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Scarlett Rockwood. As a content marketer for pet professionals, I love talking with other marketers and business owners in the pet industry and sharing their marketing advice with you. So join me for the latest episode and learn how to grow your audience, increase your revenue, and impact the lives of pets and their people. Hey, and welcome to this solo episode of the Pet Marketing Podcast. I'm Scarlett Rockwood, and today I wanna talk to you about the value of using influencer marketing for your pet business. Um, So a lot of what I talk about today is actually gonna be uh, some interesting statistics and information about the difference in using pet influencers versus human influencers. Um, But there's also a lot of great um, value to just using influencers in your marketing at all. Um, So pet influencers have actually existed for over 10 years in the social media marketing industry. And over the basically core of COVID, um, they kind of came to the forefront and became even more popular. Uh, Even people and brands who were using human influencers uh, started to realize the value of pet influencers, even for brands that are not pet specific. The evergreen appeal of uh, cute and lovable animals is really easily translated um, and they do really well in ads. They're lucrative for brand partnerships and um, it's easier for you know pet accounts to garner hundreds of thousands of followers. Um, so pet influencers can really be a gold mine for any brand, whether it is in the pet industry or not. These days, pet influencers and their owners who have really big social media followings, especially those who have really good engagement, um, they're commanding tens and thousands of dollars just for creating content for brands and they're making it a full-time job just as much as the most successful human influencers can. And part of the reason for this is that um, animals do not divide opinions as much in the general market as uh, humans can or causes many controversies. Um, For example, um, although there are places within the pet industry where there's a lot of controversy based on certain animal themed content, like whether or not you are using uh, positive reinforcement or balance training as a dog trainer, uh, in something as simple as uh, an ad for a carpet cleaner or an ad for a washable rug, using a uh, a cute dog as the theme and the person who is, um, or account who is uh, promoting that product is a lot less controversial. And you don't have to worry as much about whether people agree with that dog's political opinion or religious affiliation. Um, It's it's a lot harder to find people who just hate dogs (laughs) than it is to find someone who hates a particular person. One quote from Lonnie Edwards, who is the CEO and founder of The Dog Agency, a platform that represents over 150 animal influencers, including Duncan Ducks, who has 2.1 million followers on TikTok, and Toby Toad, who has 193,000 followers on Instagram. Um, She mentions that pets offer stronger brand security. Um, And she says, a human influencer runs the risk of scandal, gets drunk at a party, tweets, or does something offensive. Whereas dogs are cute, (laughs) they're adorable, they're crowd favorites, and as a bonus, they come with a higher engagement rate. Um, This is something that uh, there are tons of studies out there if you'd like to look it up. Um, A simple Google search will get you a lot of this information, Uh, but just in general, pet accounts versus human influencer accounts typically have a higher engagement rate, and that is really valuable to you when you are deciding Um, what influencer to work with uh, because how many followers they have is only the first metric on how much you're actually going to get back um, in your marketing efforts. How many people are actually going to see it? How many people are going to engage with it and remember that ad that you have placed with that influencer? And engagement rates are a really good metric to see that more people are going to engage with that content, like or comment or share, and that means they're going to uh, not only see it, but probably remember it better than if they had not seen it at all or if they had just scrolled past it. 
So engagement rate is a really important metric here. One example of this is uh, a metric from Spear RJ, which is a media auditor, and it cites that Kim Kardashian's Instagram uh, only offers an engagement rate of about 1.6%. For an account that large, that's actually a really, really good engagement rate. But in comparison, Loki, who is a famous wolf dog influencer on Instagram, has a 2.51% engagement rate, and he can get as many as 50,000 likes or more for every single post. Um, that is just one example of how pets can get a much higher engagement rate than humans. The reality is that the value of a pet account and a human account, as far as influencers go, is about the same in terms of their ability to be a spokesperson for you, because again, there is a human behind that account. Um, but pets are just more appealing across multiple demographics. Um, and then that, that causes them to garner uh, more positive reactions and that coveted higher engagement rate. Um, there is nothing more thumb-stopping than cute furry friends to drive engagement. That is a quote um, from the co-founder and CEO of um, affable.ai, which is another influencer marketing platform. Um, he also says that furry influencers usually help to establish emotional connections uh, a lot easier than human influencers can, um, and they can tap into other undiscovered audiences. So if you have a, you know, a home care or decorating or like a vacuum um, or, or products like that, a lot of people go for moms and families, but a lot of people don't think about the fact that that pet is also part of the family for a lot of people and having pet influencers um, will draw in the pet loving audience even more. Um, now all of this so far has been specifically just using pets over human influencers, but it's also really important to think about the fact that as a pet industry, of course we're gonna wanna use pets uh, in our influencer marketing. But why bother using influencer marketing at all, especially if you're a small business? Well, the value here is that using influencer marketing increases um, the feeling of user-generated content and it increases the ability to get social proof. Because as a brand, you saying your products or services are great are one thing, but other people saying it is a whole other story. And yes, you can get reviews, testimonials, and things like that from your customers and clients, but how much more valuable is it when that person uh, not just has a handful of friends to suggest you to, but thousands or tens of thousands? Uh, and that's where influencers come in. Um, now, the value of influencers over just a regular person leaving you a great review or testimonial is mostly due to something that is called the parasocial relationship. Now, this is something that basically means that our brains will actually store our feelings and thoughts about a celebrity or someone who we see often or hear their voice often um, in the same place it stores memories of our friends and family, even if we've never met this person. And we reach a point where we end up thinking of them in the same way um, subconsciously as we do of people that we've actually met. And because of that, if we follow an influencer that we really like, then when they suggest something, we are more likely to trust them than if we saw that same suggestion as a, a traditional advertisement. Um, and that is why it is so important to uh, loop into influencer marketing. Uh, now, this is something that I think pretty much all of the big brands that have a huge budget have pretty much figured out. But the challenge is that what if you're a smaller business and you don't have thousands of dollars to spend on a single Instagram campaign? Um, well, the good news there is that there can actually be more value in reaching out to small micro influencers than working with the really big ones. And that does not to say that it's not worth working with someone who has over 100,000 followers. It definitely is. But in some cases, it's actually just as valuable, if not more valuable, to spend your budget on 10 smaller influencers than one bigger one. And the reason for that is that on average, those accounts have a higher engagement rate because more people see it. The bigger your account gets, the fewer people and the smaller percentage of your audience actually gets to see your content and engage with you. 
So if you have a collection of 10 different influencers who have 100,000 followers all together, that average engagement rate could be as high as five or 10 or even more percentile. Whereas if you have one person who has over 100,000 followers and they have a much smaller engagement rate, the actual number of people who are seeing and engaging with your advertisement is going to be higher. Now there are other trade-offs, of course. There are points at which a person gets so big that like it's if you have the budget for it, you should absolutely do it. Um, but in most cases, having uh, a small business means that you have a smaller budget to work with and that working with a few micro influencers or people who are in, you know, a few thousand or um, a few tens of thousands uh, is going to be more affordable for you, whereas anything beyond that feels unreachable. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't get into influencer marketing just because your budget isn't there yet. Uh, the only thing that I will caution you on is if you are going to work with influencers, please respect them as professionals and respect content creators as someone who is performing a job for you because they are. Um, if you are reaching out to people who are doing professional photo shoots with your products, um, who have experience and can back it up with numbers um, of working with other brands and can show you the value of you know s increased sales for your product or service, then this is a person who is saving you the cost of hiring a professional photographer or videographer, hiring models, taking the time that it's gonna take out of your day to schedule these ad campaigns, hiring copywriters. These are all things that, think about the cost of actually like running an ad on television, not just the cost of actually putting it on the um, channel space, but also the cost of filming that ad and writing the, the script for that ad and hiring the actors. All of these are things that, um, on its own scale also is happening when you hire an influencer. So think about that and then consider the fact that that is their time and their expertise that they're providing to you as well. And if they are a good professional influencer, they do deserve to be paid. Um, so there are definitely situations where you can have what we call brand ambassadors. Um, I like to consider this really a segmentation. I don't consider influencers and brand ambassadors to be the same thing. Um, I think it's important to draw a line there in that um, influencers are professionals who are performing um, a, a service to you and they deserve to be paid. Uh, whereas brand ambassadors are, we're not saying that they're not providing a service, but these are more likely people who are, um, have their Instagram account as a hobby and they are not necessarily professionals in the sense of copywriting and photography. They are just a person who really loves your product and would be super happy to get uh, something for free in return for talking about it. This is someone who is a hyper fan, who is trading more of a testimonial for a product uh, versus someone who is um, basically replacing a commercial for you in your marketing campaign. Um, so think about how much the value of the person that you're working with is in terms of whether they are just increasing your user generated content folder and, and maybe they have a few hundred or a few thousand followers, but they're not a, a professional marketer in the way that an influencer is. Um, and it may be that having a brand ambassador program is the right thing for your business at this time. Uh, and ha working with influencers is something that you can work up to later on. Or perhaps you have two different programs that you run side by side. Um, but I do think that it's very important that you keep in mind that if you are going to reach out to influencers, be ready to pay them, whether that is on a commission basis or on a per post basis, whatever you work out with them as a fair rate. Um, and you should definitely respect them as professionals, just as you would expect them to respect you as a business owner. If you have any questions at all about influencer marketing, as always, you can reach out to me. I have my contact information in the show notes. Uh, you can join my free Facebook group and post in there with any questions that you have. Uh, and I'll also leave a link to Insiders Club membership. Uh, is open to join in the Insiders Club right now. And uh, there is at least one masterclass inside there on how to work with influencers 
for your business. Uh, and as always, I am here to coach and feedback and mentor anyone in the Insiders Club who has questions about this or anything else in the digital marketing realm. Um, thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you in the next episode. What was your favorite thing about this episode? Hit me up on Instagram at Scarlet Rockwood to tell me about it or ask any questions that you have about marketing your own pet business. If you know other pet professionals who would love this podcast, go ahead and screenshot this episode and share it to your Instagram stories. Be sure to tag me when you do because seeing who's listening and hearing your feedback is 100% what motivates me to keep doing what I do. You can also join the Content Marketing for Pet Professionals Facebook group to connect with other pet industry professionals like you. If you'd like to follow up on any of the resources or links mentioned in this episode, you can find them in the show notes. Don't forget to be awesome, and I'll see you in the next episode.